founder-led sales literally changed the world. And in it, I tell stories of people like James Watt and his, you know, he invented the steam engine. Brilliant mind, right? Engineering mind to invent this. But what had to happen was James Watt had to be an expert seller and marketer, right? Like that had to happen. Otherwise, everybody was laughing at this thing. Like, what the heck is that? He literally developed the concept of ROI. He was the guy that developed the calculation for what a horsepower is. And horsepower is still a term that's used today. You have guys like Cyrus McCormick and the Reaper. You know, the Reaper is used on farms everywhere. It's obviously come a long way since the 1700s. But I tell the story of how he, literally nobody wanted this thing. And they were like, that's stupid. He went to a public exhibition, I believe in London, to show this thing off. The London Times said, oh, this guy freaking presented this thing. And it, it was ridiculous. It's like a flying machine. It's so dumb. Like they literally tore this thing to shreds and it's literally revolutionized the world. A great inventor, but more importantly, as a founder, as a CEO, as a leader, these individuals had to be even better and more creative salespeople and marketers to be able to take this to market. You know, one more that I thought was hilarious is um, Gustavius uh, Swift, who he was the guy that invented refrigerated train cars. And the fact that, gosh, what a tough, like refrigerated train cars. So instead of having to ship cattle, you could slice it up, put it in, the, like it makes things so much more efficient. It's such a big problem that had such an easy solution. However, what was the problem? Everybody had already bought cattle cars. So what are they going to do? Just like, oh, let's dump those and buy these more express. Like, and so his process that he had to go through to convince people that their sunk cost of cattle cars had to go away because refrigerated cattle car, or, you know, refrigerated train cars were going to be the way of the future. And again, revolutionized everything. So that's just a recent example, a recent lesson that I've come across that for your audience, I think it should inspire you, but also realize that you could be the brains of the operation. As we talk about transparency, it doesn't mean you got to go get a, a plaid jacket and some gold chains and get all gross because you got to sell it. Now, I mean, these people didn't. You don't need to do that either. Like being a human being is the way of the future, the way that sales has always been and always should be. It's just a mindset as to how you influence people in the right way to change their mindset so that you're not working against them, but you're working with them to help them understand new ideas that mean that they're not wrong. They just didn't have the full picture. Yeah. And I love that. I love that. Um, so, right. Exactly. Kind of bring it back to yep. transparency then. Um, for, for those who haven't read the transparency seal, first of all, the, the link will be in the podcast notes. And I can't recommend the book enough to anybody who's starting out in that journey. Who's, you know, a, a lot of small businesses, the founder, and I say this all the time, your founder and your CEO is absolutely for a long time, your best salesperson, and it will help you become more efficient. And there's a lot of ideas in yep. the transparency seal that kind of turn things on its head, not least of which was time to lose, right? Everybody's mad keen on tracking how long it takes to win a deal. How long does it, how long from start conversation to win that conversation? And you flip that on its head and, and ask people, well, how long does it take you to lose the deals that you're going to lose? What's your time to lose? That for me was really powerful. And I think that applies across marketing as well as sales, right? Yeah. Let's talk first about like, let's define what this transparency thing means for everybody, because, you know, transparency is an overused word. It's oft confused with authenticity, which is also important, but completely different. And here's what transparency means. All right. And I'll tell it through the lens of the market research that led me to the conclusion, but let's maybe tell a B2C story too, that make it relatable. Um, so let, let's just start with the research. Paul, as you mentioned at the beginning, I was the CRO of Power Reviews in Chicago. We were in the review space, right? You've probably interacted with the tech before. You know, you're buying a pair of Crocs or, you know, sweater on Vineyard Vines or a thousand other retailers. When you look at the product, you scroll down, there's reviews. That was us doing the collect and display for them and a thousand retailers and brands. What happened was, and, and again, I was the CRO. I wasn't even thinking about this study, but we engaged with a local university here in Chicago, Northwestern University, just to look at what does a consumer do when a website's acting as a salesperson? So you got a website, you're selling something. What do people do? Three data points came out of it. 
two of which changed my life like could only happen to a nerd, right? Like I quit my job like a lunatic and wrote a book. A data point number one for all of you is like you're probably all review readers, right? You're buying something you haven't bought before. At the time, it was 96% of us will read reviews first, right? We want to get some other opinions on this thing. But the two data points that changed my life, right? number one was, are you one of those weirdos that reads the negative reviews first? You skip the fives, yeah. you read the fours, threes, twos, and ones first. Well, turns out it doesn't make you a weirdo. It makes you a human yeah. being. We all do that. Like we literally seek out the negative reviews and many of us go there first. And the last data point was on a five-star scale. And this is across all product categories. Some skew higher, some skew lower. But when the average review score of a product is between a 4.2 and a 4.5, that's optimal for purchase conversion. What I want you to hear there is a product that has negative reviews will sell at a higher conversion rate than a product that has nothing but perfect five-star reviews. And so I looked at that and I was like, all right, that's when a website's acting as a salesperson. I, like, why do we go to the negative first? And why do we actually need the negative to be able to trigger a purchase decision? And wait, does that apply to human to human or B2B selling too? And so I started digging into the behavioral science of it. I found a local neuroscientist that works at a university and I was like, hey, this is what I'm thinking. What do you think? And he dug through, he got me some research that's tagged in the, the first book. but. Turns out it applies to human to human selling too. That when we like this idea of transparency, it actually sells better than trying to be perfect. Leading with what you give up to be great at your core. Leading with what maybe a competitor does better than you. Leading with, if you're at a high price point, setting that pricing expectation, whatever it is, when we clear the elephant in the room, we clear that and we lead to the value instead of leading with it, magic happens in our brains. Now it's not a trick, it's not a gimmick. We as human beings are prediction machines. We buy when we can predict, not when we're convinced. And so when you think about your role as a seller or a marketer, your job is not to convince that you're all things to all people and you're always a perfect five star because our brains won't trigger a purchase decision that way because subconsciously we know that perfection doesn't exist. And so we got to go find the negative to them. Right, and so I'll stop there for a second, and I'll give a, I'll give you an example, a B to C example that I think businesses in B to B don't think about, don't leverage. But thoughts on that, Paul? Before I do, so many things I want to jump off on, and like honestly, Todd, we could we could talk for hours on all of these subjects. I think for me, that it creates that capability to come across as genuine and honest, and I think that's something we all crave. We've all been stung by bad deals that seem too good to be true, but we did it anyway because let's take that risk. And and the higher the purchase price, the more important that is for us. And so for me, it's it's about two things. And I do exactly that. I asked ChatGPT to do it for me now, right? Like go and have a look at the reviews and tell me what people are saying. Bad. Yes. Trip advisor, you know, if I've gone on holiday, tell me, tell me from 2020 to 2023, what was it like in the summer holidays for this particular site? I did that two weeks ago. It worked really well. It's, are the, can I get an honest review of what's wrong with this place? Can I bear what's wrong with it? If there is things that's wrong with it, are they tolerable for the upsides? And is, are they niched enough that they know what I want? And I think that's important for B2B. I come across a lot of resistance for people to, as, as, you, as you'll probably call it, niche, right? Like niche down to something specific. So I got told I needed to work with business coaches. They're a great business partner for me. And then I start to look at business coaches and I realize that business coaches themselves is quite a big category. So we need to go and again. And the more you niche down, the closer you come to being able to speak to just that group of people and being very good at that one thing that everybody's afraid to do, but it magnetizes that bunch of folks who, who were there. They are your customers and they will never move away. And it doesn't mean that nobody else will come to you. It just means that these people here will absolutely identify and align with you. And I, I just think it's, it, it transformed me as well. When you, when you start talking about transparency and like you can apply it to so many things across life, you know, not just sales and marketing, like it just applies to loads of things. Yeah. For anybody that wants to influence anybody to do anything, 
you know, used for good, not evil. It's so powerful because again, it's helping us predict.